Most people in America are looking for, how do I make my life worth living and return with having? Well, as American citizens, we have to remember our heritage. We have to be valuing our history. We have to know what the statues that have been planted across America are about. A lot of times they just have the name of the person on the statue, but sometimes those additional placards have been removed or pulled out by someone in maintenance who might not be as proud of the outcome of that battlefield. The truth is that America is still remaining a battlefield, and that's the hardest part for Americans who are white to get their heads about. You see, when we say this, they want to believe that we have come so far in our growth and our development and our psycho-emotional health that people are no longer predatory, and that's just not true. And it puts our children at major risk. I want you to think back to the 80s when we had that amazing story of some of the most popular kids on television going into a film. And it was basically a film with our American citizens fighting the Ruskies. And I promise you, that film changed the nation of other worlds. You see, what it shows was that someone could cross the border in Canada and slip in and infiltrate and attack America. And it was called Red Dawn or something like this. I don't really remember exactly. And my brain is not functioning quite the same way since I was beaten down by a black child on the college campus who really wasn't a collegiate student. But what we do have on the corners of different places are people who are in struggle. So when I talk about homelessness, I talk about homelessness from a period of expertise in it. And the only reason I've been able to thrive and survive in my homelessness is because of how my mind works. And my mind is my mind, and your mind is your mind. But my mind has become aware of the threats to America. The hardest part about the threats to America is that everybody wants to live in America. There's that great song by James Brown, Coming to America. And then we have the film of Eddie Murphy doing the Coming to America, where he's this African prince of some kind. And he comes here and he falls in love with a girl from their community. And openly, I'm okay with the general premise of the film, but the hardest part of the film was how he was betrothed to someone that he didn't want to be in love with. So that was sort of the moral of the story, I think, but it's hard to say exactly what the moral was other than the fact that he was a very moral prince. His friend was sort of the derelict in the duties and always trying to make him be naughty and do things, but that's why he was friends with him, because he was the one who kept him on the straight and narrow. By Arsenio's Hall's character of misbehavior, he recognized the appropriateness of what was and wasn't proper behavior, and he could sense this because he had been trained his whole life how to fight. And I'm wondering if that is not what's been happening here. I'm wondering if we are facing things coming forward that we're not expecting here because we're so used to video game culture on our cell phones and in our homes. And we're so used to the concept of everyone has a right here that we're not thinking about what could happen to our lives here. You see, the people who are going into the facilities to handle our food are predominantly people that come from under education about the food handling industry and the sanitation industry and there is a point that there's an attitude that those children don't take pride in their work and don't care i've seen this even in managers that are of different colors from different nations that they are horrible managers and yet they still keep employees there until an employee said to me the other day which was sort of comical and sort of appropriate and sort of age appropriate and sort of truthful that, God forbid, his patience were out with his micromanaging manager. And he, that manager would not want to see the day of that. So what we have is an interesting film industry that is either helping us or harming ac us across America, but also around the world where they export, export film. Now my advisory to the vice president in my humble duties as a United States citizen who has the full-on right to use social media until the bastards of Satan decided to push me off Twitter is that we have the right to communicate. It's called freedom of the press, and since I am a fully trained journalist, amongst the many things I've done in my lifetime 
as a professional gentleman, I have to say that young people don't care about the laws here. And we've had generations coming out of their issues that have not cared about how America has come become great. So when those children of difficult situations are coming up through the ranks through adulthood, they're just thinking about what's in it for me. Now Kantian theory is totally different than that. Kantian theory says what's good for the one is good for the many. But I want you to think about who the power players now on television or TV or cable or in movies today. We have Tyler Perry who is parodying a person of color who is also a woman and he is a man doing that capability. We also have Oprah who has really earned her way because of the number of interviews she has given in her lifetime. In truth, she could become a marvelous president provided that she has not become a reverse racist. Because most of her television programs that she now owns on OWN, isn't that an interesting title for a network? Oprah Winfrey Network, OWN is sort of marvelous because most all of the characters are black. So we have a real powerhouse in Hollywood and a real powerhouse in production where people are really getting to see true black lives, which is marvelous for all of us. But there's also sort of a risk to people. And the risk is what are the demographics now of America? The procreation movement has been used in many ways, but sometimes used in incorrect ways. And what we have are young impoverished children having children who don't care about the parenting of their children. What they care about is the population of the nation underneath the concepts that you see in the Bible of go out and create and become one nation. At the present time we have a white president. And as I'm looking over the political candidates coming forward with him in the Democratic Party, and as I so wrote to Marion Williamson, look, you people have to decide who really wants to be president, and you have to really decide who the fuck knows how to do the job. And I believe under those terms, what I said is you need to partner and align with each other so that when you win, everyone goes to the White House. But not everyone went. And that might be because of the dysfunction in a community that should be working in unity, or that could be because we need to have certain people still working towards getting there. Now we have Cory Booker, and we have the little bit whose name I get, Alexandra, whatever, Cortez, I think is her last name, which I just call a little bit, it's easier for me, who's a powerhouse in their community. But we have to have people who are powerhouses talking sense about how to keep America safe from external forces. We don't keep America safe from external forces if we're only touting our individualized communities. And this is where the failure to in American education is really functioning according to the Lord God above. That American education might be teaching a stinted version of concepts that we are way hundreds of years away from, such as slavery, but what we failed to do was teach the importance of all citizens. We do have very feral Indian children here, and I hate to be the guy that says this, but I've seen them, I've met them, and what if, what if that television show V gave some people some ideas? That what if America said no to the breeding of citizens with aliens, but other nations didn't say no? Because in Japan, they totally acknowledge that there are spaceships in the sky that totally fly and that are totally way above our technology. And I'm pretty sure our military would have accepted some of that technology in exchange with the right kind of, how do we say it, souls that the Lord has made. And openly, if you think about Stargate as a television show and Stargate as a concept, it's very possible that America said, okay, you can use these energy centers which are talked about on YouTube to come and go as you have for 
mill a millennium. But maybe it is exactly like what Star Trek was supposed to be about, where they were supposed to come, observe, and leave without causing problems. You see, John, Gene Roddenberry would not have been someone who would want to disarm or harm American citizens. But if we have people now in Hollywood with so much power and so much clout that they don't mind if several groups are snuffed out, we have problems then. You see, we sort of are in the midst of a cultural war and we sort of are in the midst of a professional war. That there are people coming out of their families, people coming out of their homes that don't actually want to preserve America in the way that it has always been preserved. And that, in truth, is a risk to us all. Because the idea that if I gain power I can do all these things may be somewhat truthful, but at the same time, there's the risk to American citizens that says, look, you've got one lifetime here. And what are you going to do for your legacy here? What's going to be your personal legacy? If you can't even behave yourself in a fast food job, then why the hell would America be surviving on your capabilities? Do you know what I mean? Because American citizens have to eat. Myself, I go to a Wendy's last night because I needed a little extra sustenance for the night. And openly, I ordered two hamburgers. But the black Indian woman who has engine as a license plate, I believe, in that facility there, did not want to take my order correctly. And she has done this to me many times. And basically, what she did was upgrade my purchase so that my money would not cover what I wanted to buy. And what I ended up with was cheese on my burger, which I didn't want, and onions and tomatoes on my burger that I did not want. And openly, I think she thought she was being nice, but she was thinking that on behalf of her company, because she was a manager of some kind and allowing me the right to go to her window, that she had the right to change my order and change the use of my money. Now, my late father was lieutenant colonel in the military, which gives me some rank and some privilege in America. And most people forget what maritime law is because no one's been teaching that in the hood at all. And what we see across America is people do have a love for military clothing like me and hunter stuff like me, and we have hobbies like that. But we're not preparing our children to be wise enough to get the fuck off their phone and pay attention to what's going on in the food zone or in their own lives so that they remain safe, not only from American citizens, but also from people who are coming here immorally and illegally through studentship and having no plan to leave here. It is the lie that Americans are missing completely. And as a man who had a fully foreign Japanese spouse and basically wife and son before they were lost to my life, I can tell you who came 10 years before are not the people that are coming here today. So when we're looking at the nations around the world, we have to remember that America is the superpower in the world still at the present moment. But we have formidable enemies around the world who will play with you, stay with you, play with you if they can, and ruin America. It doesn't mean that we're going to have the pockets of civil war everywhere, but we sort of already have that with gang wars in their own culture, in their own tribes, in their own way that they think that they're going to thrive. And that puts America more at risk to the world. Because the rest of the world who is working in peace, like Japan and other places, they value America. But there are other nations that have been planning for years to try to commandeer America, commandeer your children, make them forget where they came from, how hard they worked, how many slaves and masters and caretakers and whatever of every color of the world have died. To preserve America. You see, when I compliment a black community artist, I'm impressed by the artwork. 
but what I'm also saying is I'm wise enough, and I hate to say white enough, and I mean that in no type of racism, that I was lucky enough to be educated about what was really right about what Americans in general holding hands in peace and honor and liberty fought about to bring about for our children today, including mine, who is no longer here, but possibly a world away. The reality of America is we have the right to privacy of almost everything. But if we are not careful, a vice presidency can ruin almost everything because she had to claim one thing, then she's claimed another, but what if she's one of those children of that endeavor called V? You see, we have to be cautious, but we have to be bringing up our next group of politicians that value the cultural diversity of American liberty. Because if we don't have those people who are white and black and other skins fighting for diversity, some of us could be snuffed out. 